Hey everyone, before this episode gets started, I just want to record a little message because this little bit of information didn't make it into any of the videos I recorded for this LP. Remember that thing I said about how this isn't going to be a 100% playthrough? Well, as normal, I lied. Anything that you see ignored or not collected during the main playthrough, it will be gotten and it will be shown off in the bonus episode at the very least. So yeah, this, uh, this just turned into a 100% playthrough. That said, I will now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. Please enjoy episode number 8 of Let's Play Bayonetta 2. Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to Let's Play Bayonetta 2. Last time we got swallowed by a giant demonic mechanical manta ray known as Insidious. And we fought our way out of the belly of the beast and we had to go through the Lumen Sage to do it. This time, we're going to continue on our journey to the Gates of Hell in Chapter 8, An Ancient Civilization. This is... Welcome to Hell, love. Too late to repent. These are the gates. Whatever your friend did to get on the other side of these. Let's just say, she's not having a good day. No, she isn't, little one. But she'd still be alive if she hadn't wasted her life saving mine. Huh? Well, she doesn't seem like such a bad friend after all. Thimble Venter can wait for now. I'm opening the gate. Well, thank you. Oh, I can't just leave you at a shuttered gate after your sob story, love. Besides, who's gonna save you if our stalker decides to show up again? Alright, let's do this. Okay, we've had a couple of uh, conversations now which kind of humanized Loki a little bit. I'm, I'm digging that. So we're right here at the gates of hell. By the end of this, we will actually uh, have entered Inferno finally. But first, we're gonna start off like so many chapters do, with a journal echo. And this one's talking about things which were once sealed away. Uh, namely, there used to be tons and tons of ways to enter Inferno and Paradiso, but most of them were destroyed, and the ones that weren't were sealed away behind these strong magical barriers. And they were scattered around, they were hidden on top of mountains and under oceans, places which would never otherwise be accessible. Oh, and before we proceed any further, we get this really cool design. We get the Confuser of Elements, Greed. It's mechanical, three-headed, uh, Cerberus-like monster. Two bodies fused together. Attacks with fire and ice. Not too bad. The heads are even color-coded, actually. Uh, it's a little bit... You can even see in the design, it's a little bit like Fearlessness. That's... that Sonic's fin dash isn't... It's like a fearlessness and fairness from Bayonetta 1. Complete with the lunging grab attack that I always got hit by in the first game. I don't know what it is about that kind of attack, but it always gets me. No matter how many times I, I play through Bayonetta 1, no matter how much I try to avoid that, it will always get me. Unbelievable. Oh, that enemy is my, like, the anti-spirit animal. My cursed animal. Uh, yeah, Loki has to, to Bastion-like form a couple of platforms for us. These crystalline diamonds don't hold anything except currency. Uh, yeah, the, the blood orbs translate into halos. They kind of look like DMC uh, orbs. And we get another journal echo. What is this one talking about? actually don't remember off the top of my head. Uh... Oh, this is uh, just talking about, like, Purgatorio and the overlapping of the trinity of realities and how angels and demons are depicted as either... The angels always get depicted as holy and pious, and demons wretched, wicked, uh, lost souls who are banished to the lowest depths of Inferno. Kind of twisted around. That and that there are some people who are special enough to be able to see the demons... Oh, actually, you know what? That brings up an interesting point. Um, oh, right, I want to backtrack, though. 
Uh, so while I'm backtracking, I'll talk about this. The the because that journal talks about the way demons and angels are depicted. It kind of brings up something interesting that I've been thinking about a little bit. Um, this is with the green enemy just being introduced. This is probably the most pronounced we've seen it. Uh, just because we haven't fought that many demons so far. But it's really pronounced with greed. He kind of looks robotic. You know how the angels were designed to be like gross and organic under all the holy, sacred, white and gold armor? Well, Hashimoto, the, the uh, designer of the angels and the game's director, they he took that and he went for the complete opposite with the uh, the design of the demons. And he made them robotic instead of all, like, gross and organic looking. So you have all of, like, the fleshy... angels, and then you have these robotic looking demons. Uh, the other one where it was really obvious that that was, like, a, a clear design choice was, uh, Pain, the big tank from a couple chapters back. This angel arm, Muspel Lime, is kind of annoying. I'm not big fan of the, uh... Well, I guess they're not angel arms, they're, uh, demon arms. Uh, either way, I'm not a huge fan of this one. Uh, just because I don't like the demon weapons that much. The, this shotgun is awesome. The other ones? Uh, the top does not as much damage as I would hope. Ah, uh, as I would hope. Uh, it's, it's a pretty heavy hit. But it's got a really big startup. The swords are nothing spectacular. Uh, they do all right damage, and they have a combo. This, that shotgun, though, hmm. Huge, huge damage output. Plus, it's pretty quick, and it does a ton of, uh, poise damage. Use it to borrow a soul's term. It staggers enemies really easily, like, uh, most shotgun weapons in Bayo. The Onyx Roses were really good for that in Bayo 1. Uh, and that's that. That, nah. Kind of a... Poor showing on the muscle line. Uh, this whole chapter so far has not been going amazing. It's not been going, like, horrible, but... Lots of gold rankings. It's gonna be hard to keep my streak of platinums going. Uh, and I found out that there's actually a, a pretty good incentive to get all platinum rankings across all the chapters. I wasn't gunning for it originally, I didn't know it existed, but now that I know... I especially don't want to break that streak, so I have to pick it up a little bit. Stop getting golds. There's a... There's a, a huge number of verses in this chapter, so I have a couple of opportunities to mess around. It's only been two chapters, actually. I thought there were more. Uh, it was the one that introduced the Greeds and the Muspel Lime just now. I thought we had another one. Alright. Well, we have a nice little... chapter against some Hatreds. Oh, no. I just realized. Are these... Uh-oh. Doing that thing with the enemy names again. So the standard demons are Hatreds, I believe. And then... I thought the higher-up ones, the ones that are like one rank above the Hatreds here, were Insidiouses, but I think they have a different name. I, I'm Now I'm not sure. I'm questioning whether or not... The Manta Ray was insidious or not. Oh no, I'm so bad with names! Okay, well, we have, uh... Oh, we don't have the key pieces yet. Jeez, I'm getting all confused in this one. Okay, so that thing takes a special key to open up, and that's what Loki is gonna go ahead and get. But before he does that, we have... Yet another new enemy that we're about to be introduced to. Golem is back! He is basically in every Platinum game now. I'm disappointed he wasn't in Korra, to be honest. Uh, so this enemy type is the one uh, you might recognize from Bayo 2. He has a different shape. He's more of a diamond now. He spins around like a top. He's still a pain to fight. A little bit... Uh, a little bit easier in this one. Not easier, but, uh, less of a pain. So, this is the enemy that reconfigures itself. In Bayo 1, it constantly reconfigured itself into your own infernal demons. In this one, it just seems to take on, like, random shapes, and that 
Oh, that one is really hard to predict. The shape it's in now? God damn, I'm getting ruined by it. Hold on. To take a second and concentrate a bit more. Uh, Umber and Climax, once you pop it, the golem will just freeze up. Yeah, golems are still not the simplest things to fight. Uh, the nice things about golem, uh, now, in Bayo 2, is that... Whoop, this one... Uh, the, the one in Bayo 1, what made it a pain was that you had to hit the core, and not all of the forms that it could morph itself into were really conducive to, uh, attacking the core. So you had to wait for the right one. Like, Gamora was kind of easy to attack, and there were a couple of other ones. This one, though, you can just hit it anywhere, and, uh, it'll... It'll take about equal damage, and then once you do enough, it'll drop down and expose its core for a little bit of extra damage, but you don't need to rely on hitting it to actually hurt it in this one. Uh, this version of of uh, the Golem, the one that appears here in Bayo 2, is I think a callback to Wonderful 101's version of the uh, Golem enemy, the Tamiki. And then the one from Bayo 1 was an homage to Yami from Okami. And this one is, uh, this one's just talking about the remembrances of time again. Uh, which, just to recap, they were like... A remembrance of time is like a photographic history of humanity and civilization, and they were stored in the Garden of God. But that this is not what we're here for. We're here for these shards of, uh, stained glass floating above my head. Ooh, we got in a rapture somewhere. There he is, emitting all the, uh, rays of gold. Yeah, they will buff all the enemies around him, you can tell because they turn red. Uh, I think in Raptures, I don't know if I said this before, I think they also heal the, uh, enemies that they're buffing. So you just find them, target them down. But we're not done with this verse just yet, because we are getting yet another new enemy introduced to us in this chapter. This time it's another new angel enemy. This one is the Allegiance. Uh, it's a tougher centaur, it's a tougher uh, accolade, basically, with this flaming extendo sword, which is kind of tricky to do. Ah, I didn't juggle him right. Gotta do it again. Uh, because that, that attack is delayed a little bit, it can make it tricky to dodge properly. And the fact that it comes out from underneath you. It's got another attack that comes out from the ground, like that. There we go. Uh, that one's a little more predictable, because it seems to come out immediately. The ones that come out on a delay, it's really easy to dodge too early and take the hit. But, uh... That's not too- Ah, god damn it! Combo score is too low. Another gold! It's like several in a row. Five or six? I haven't been paying attention to how many verses. But for doing that, we get a third of a broken, uh, golden LP. And behind this door, there's just a moon pearl lying out for us. A broken moon pearl. Which we now have enough to complete another full moon pearl. That's one of the only ones, I think that might be the only one in the game. That's just lying there outside of a chest, aside from the ones you get as a reward for doing the muscle limes. I think there was only one like that in Bayonetta 1, too. It was a witch heart, a, a, an LP, or a, a heart. There was just one. Uh, oh! Okay. Right. I almost forgot to do this. So, I'm gonna backtrack to the beginning of the level for a hidden verse real quick. Almost forgot about this. In Bayo 1, this was really common that you would have to backtrack, like, all the way to the beginning of the level. Sometimes, uh, usually it was to activate an Alfheim that wasn't active at the time that you first passed through the area, so there was a lot of backtracking to get the Alfheims and the Hidden Verses in the first game. Uh, that's not really the case in Bayo 2. Uh, there isn't a ton of backtracking. Even in this case, when we had to go back to the beginning of the level, it like, the beginning of the level's right there. It's a pretty short one. Short, kind of linear level. Even though there's tons of Verses in it. Uh, and this one is just against... Yeah, I have totally forgotten their names. The higher-up versions of Hatreds. Oh, why am I so bad with names? Is 
it agony? Something like that? Oh. Oh well. I will never be good at remembering names. And I. Oh god. I'm crushed by how mediocre some of these verses have gone. I think that it has to be another gold, right? Gotta start turning this around. Otherwise, I'm gonna break my platinum streak. Yeah, that was not a good verse. Combo score is always pretty easy again. I'm surprised my time was that poor. And then damage, usually the hardest thing to keep off you. Combo score, you should never really have that much of a problem with. Uh, with the exception of a couple of fights. Uh, mostly boss fights, where it's it might be a little bit harder to keep your combo going. Oh, and we come back out to the plaza where we fought, uh, the golem for, what is this, the fourth journal of the, of the level? And this one's actually talking about the golems. Must have appeared here after we fought it. Uh, so... God made the golem, the, the prototypical first golem, to protect all sorts of, all manner of sacred things. And then people eventually discovered this golem, this prototype golem. And they found a way to make something similar to the golem. And of course, being humans, they turned it into a war machine that they eventually had to seal away because it was way too destructive. Uh, this is a pain in the ass. If you saw the little flyby a second ago, there's a, there it is one of those violet diamond-shaped crystals, and that one had a really easily missable Moon Pearl in it. Uh, this is just like the section from the first game when you're flying through and trying to hit the core of all the tentacles. I don't know how that puts us so far away from the portal after we just kicked it, unless it's a second portal in the distance or something. Uh, yeah. Come on, let me get up on it. There we go. Uh, there's another chapter that starts out just like this, that I almost confused this one for. Uh, there's a hidden verse, like, right at the beginning that you miss if you turn this thing and reconfigure the world like that. I love that th that, that mechanic returns from Bayo 1, like, reconfiguring the world in that way. Spinning everything around. Uh, there is a little missable chest over here, though, that you can jump to. Oh, it just has a lollipop in it. That's always disappointing to see. It's like, oh man, chest way off in the distance. I got panther jump to it. Nope, it's a shitty lollipop. Oh, greeds and hatreds. For a sec, I thought they were furies. Uh, fury... Wait, is that... Yeah, one of them's a fury. The one that's flying around. Uh, I should probably pay more attention to the greed, though, especially since I need the Platinums here. Umbran Climax will help out, make sure the greed is dead. Okay, good. This is actually a strong verse. Man, now that I'm actually focusing on my rank in the chapters, I'm doing shittier. I was doing fine while I wasn't paying attention to it. But now I'm like, ah, oh, gotta get the special reward. Gotta keep the streak alive. Ah. Weak combo score. Coming like three minutes after I said you should have no problem keeping your combo score high. Uh, there are a couple of exceptions to that. Plus, I did that poorly. I think I let it drop at some point in the middle of that. So before you go through Loki's portal, you can jump right around it. And you get the second third of that golden LP. And you know what else you get? A hidden verse. Yeah, I think I'm going to be doing all the hidden verses. I wasn't sure back in the first chapter of the game. Uh, I expressed a little bit of uncertainty about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I dodged the attack. That always gets me. No! Okay, well, I'm still going to platinum this. Uh, it's not gonna be a pure plaque because of that one little hit of damage, but, eh. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure if I was gonna do all the hidden verses, but since you need them to, uh, keep your ranking high anyway... My, I'm gonna do all the hidden verses. I've already hit all the ones up to this point anyway, so...
It's worth it. They're fun. Usually a nice little optional challenge to it. Uh, oh, we have one of these shitty uh, acceptances with the shield. So what I'm going to do... Ugh. Always that one hit. I can get away with most verses only taking that one hit. Got to tighten it up just a little bit. Yeah. Oh, and I can punish him too. I'm not sure if my uh, Umbered Climax is running out while I'm doing Yeah, I activate that a little bit prematurely. Whatever. Focus this one down before the shield becomes a problem. And we're good. Good stuff, good stuff. Ooh! Ooh! Not as good as I thought! Ah, uh, yeah. Hmm. Not so great. Not so great. So that's like five golds, a silver, and a couple of platinums. Okay. Uh, I think I need to start getting some pure plats to even things out. Oh, and we have a fun Alfheim. Or a uh, Muspelheim. Gonna take a while to get used to that. So this is the new version of you can't touch the ground. Uh, is there any? Yeah, Chernobog probably worked just fine here, actually. Uh, yeah, this is the new version of don't touch the ground. Oh, we don't. We already did one of these. Never mind. This is just a, a the second one. I like the ones where you the ones from Bayo One where you have to really take advantage of stuff like enemy step and the whip and some other animation quirks. Uh, but this is kind of neat in its own regard, because the platforms get destroyed. Then we have a Fidelity over here. Ooh. But yeah, you really don't need to utilize that. You don't even need to utilize the columns they give you. Um, you can really get away with just enemy stepping and air comboing and double jumping and stuff. There we go, that's kind of what I needed. In the LPs, like, especially for Bayo 1, I normally don't worry about, like, ranking that much, just... as much as I do just, you know, showing off as much stuff as possible. I, I normally don't care about the ranking that much when I'm doing the LPs. That's more of a... solo, personal time thing for me, because it's normally pretty hard to do that stuff while commentating. It takes a lot of, uh, focus and messes with your reaction times. Uh, enough Johns, though. I think we have another Fidelity fight down here, which is gonna be a pain, because it's underwater. The underwater Fidelity fights, all two or three of them... Ah, uh, they're kind of not great. Oh, that's gonna help a lot, though. Chernabog helps! And the quick si switch to Rakshasa for the extra speed. Speed got nicked. That lighting effect will never stop being awesome to me. I know I should be paying more attention to the, to the fidelity, but man, my eyes tend to wander. I go into autopilot when I'm commentating over a game. Which sometimes it's a blessing, sometimes it's a curse. That lighting effect, like the uh, the light coming through the stained glass, especially underwater, the multicolored light, it's beautiful. We saw like the, a much better version of that back in the uh, first chapter, I think. And then I think this is the last Muspelheim of the level. We're actually getting pretty close to the end of this one. I think I'm starting to turn it around a little bit. Got a couple platinums in a row, and that pure plat will actually offset things. I might just get the platinum for this one by the skin of my teeth if I do the rest of this well. Uh, to be all enemies in a single combo? No problem. That's... yeah. As long as nothing knocks me back so I can't at least uh, keep the combo going by firing the gun, that's fine. Really, the only way the combo can drop is if something hits me and incapacitates me long enough. 
Otherwise, like, if you find yourself far enough away from an enemy, you can either mid-range stinger towards it, like I just did a second ago, or just fire the guns real quick to keep the combo, uh, going, to keep the- to reset the timer. Woohoo! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Saw a little slow-moving Fury Orb. Uh, I believe when you get hit by those orbs, they actually do incapa incapacitate you or slow you down or something. Clutch a little parry. Was I running at time? Oh no, I thought I was I thought that was 0 0.76, not 59. Uh yeah, that felt pretty strong. I might not get the platinum on time, but the rest should be good. Oh no. Combo score was low there too. That's kind of unexpected. Yeah, as the game starts to get a little bit harder, uh, it's going to be a little bit harder to maintain a decent uh, ranking while talking. That's the one nice thing about post-commentary, is you could just focus on playing and then talking afterwards, but... Finding a lot more fun, a lot more interesting to get live reactions, so I normally don't ever do post-commentary. Ah, and Golem's back! Golem's gonna return a couple of times. Golem's awesome. He's taking on... I, I can't tell if this is a spider form or an octopus. If it's a spider form, it doesn't look like a Phantasmarania from the last game. And again, it's a new form of Golem, so... Ah, oh, it's a big hand. Yeah, all you have to do for that verse... Yeah. It's a freebie verse, all you have to do is run up the steps. No need for any other real input. And we have another pain! Yeah, this is, uh... This gets back to that, like, the demons have a more mechanical look, uh, thing I was talking about. I'm gonna do as much damage with this Umbra Climax as possible. Hopefully... Oh wait, no, I'm thinking of Golem. I was gonna say, hopefully it exposes its core. Uh, these things can be stunned. Yeah, there's my obligatory hit for the verse. Hopefully I don't take another one. Yeah, there we go. It's stunned for a little bit. Once you uh, hit it enough times continuously. God damn, that shotgun burst from the from the Chernabog is awesome. What a cool ass weapon this is. And then it's got these sick wicked weaves. Like the sight spinning wicked weaves. Osiris from DMC. Yes. Yeah. This is an awesome weapon. Love like it looks like the claws are drumming. They move independently. Yeah. That was easy. Says Lo Ugh, that was easy says Loki who did nothing. Oh right, there's another little missable collectible somewhere around here just like the uh there it is, red crystal this time cuz this one is a witch heart. Just like the one from the first portal we went through, uh, that had the uh, missable moon heart that you have to redo the chapter if you miss it. But that's the end of the chapter. That's the end of chapter eight, an ancient civilization. Did I, oh my God, by the skin of my teeth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven golds and a silver and only a couple of platinums, but two pure plats gets it done. Skin of my teeth, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have to step it up for the uh, subsequent chapters. Anyway, that's gonna do it for now. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.